Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at the ionic product of water, Kw. We're going to talk about what Kw is, how to calculate Kw, and use the value of Kw to find the concentration of H plus ions and pH of an alkaline solution. Acids and bases and pH have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about the ionic product of water, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. According to the bronsted lowry definition, acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. Acids dissociate and split apart into H plus ions and their conjugate base when added to water. Strong acids fully dissociate when added to water, and weak acids partially dissociate when added to water, forming a solution that contains molecules of the acid, H plus ions, and conjugate base ions. Acid dissociation constants, Ka, are equilibrium constants that describe the position of equilibrium for the dissociation of a particular weak acid at a specific temperature. They are based on the concentration of weak acid molecules, H plus ions, and conjugate base ions in the equilibrium mixture, and can be calculated using the expression Ka equals concentration of H plus times concentration of A minus divided by concentration of HA. Square brackets are used in the expression to represent concentration. For example, H plus in square brackets means concentration of H plus ions. pH is a scale used to represent the concentration of H plus ions in a solution. The scale is logarithmic to the base 10. This means a change in pH value of 1 represents a change in H plus concentration of 10 times. pH can be represented in two ways. pH equals minus log concentration of H plus, and this can also be written as concentration of H plus ions equals 10 to the power minus pH. The scale starts at 0, and this represents a H plus ion concentration of 1 mole per decimeter cubed, as minus log to the base 10, 1 equals 0. Recap done? Let's go! Water is a pretty amazing molecule, and there are many reasons as to why. One property we will focus on in this video, though, is its ability to dissociate and split apart into H plus and OH minus ions. In a sample of pure water, some of the water molecules present dissociate and split apart, becoming a H plus ion and hydroxide ion, OH minus. This means there is an equilibrium system established between water molecules, H2O, H plus ions, and OH minus ions. Now, pretty usefully for us humans and for life in general, the position of this equilibrium lies very far to the left meaning only a very small percentage of H2O molecules are dissociated at any one time in water. Furthermore, because each molecule of water that dissociates produces equal amounts of H plus and OH minus ions, the solution formed is neither acidic nor alkaline and is described as neutral, as a pure sample of water will always contain equal concentrations of H plus and OH minus ions. However, the fact that some molecules do dissociate means we can think of water as a weak acid here, as if we remind ourselves of a weak acid dissociating, it gives the reversible reaction and equilibrium HA to H plus and A minus. This looks alarmingly similar to the dissociation of water molecules, a reversible reaction and equilibrium H2O to H plus ions and OH minus ions. If we treat water as a weak acid, we can write out an expression to find its acid dissociation constant, Ka. If Ka equals concentration of H plus times concentration of A minus divided by concentration of HA, then for water, Ka equals concentration of H plus times concentration of OH minus divided by concentration of H2O. We can rearrange this to give Ka times concentration of H2O equals concentration of H plus times concentration of OH minus, 
Now, you may have spotted something odd here. Concentration of H2O. Moles of H2O in one decimeter cubed of a liquid. Because the amount of H plus ions and OH minus ions compared to H2O molecules is always going to be incredibly small, the moles of H2O present in one decimeter cubed of water is effectively constant and won't ever change, meaning it can be considered a constant value. Looking at our expression, we now have two constants, Ka and concentration of water. Well, a constant value times another constant value will give another constant value. In this case, we call this new constant Kw, the ionic product of water. Kw equals concentration of H plus times concentration of OH minus, with the units moles to the power two, decimeter to the power minus six. As we are times in two concentrations together, mole per decimeter cubed times mole per decimeter cubed equals mole to the power two times decimeter to the power minus six. Always remember, however, that this Kw value is based on that position of equilibrium between H2O, H plus, and OH minus. If the temperature of the system changes, the position of equilibrium will also change changing that Ka part of the Kw constant. And this means the value of Kw is temperature dependent. It changes based on the temperature of water. At a temperature of 298 Kelvin, the value for Kw is one times 10 to the power minus 14, units of mole to the power two, decimeter to the minus six. This means concentration of H plus ions times concentration of OH minus ions equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Pure water is neutral, meaning concentration of H plus ions is the same as concentration of OH minus ions. This must be the case, as every time one molecule of water dissociates, one H plus ion and one OH minus ion is released meaning the concentrations of both must be the same. If the value of Kw equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14, the concentrations of H plus and OH minus must be 1 times 10 to the minus 7, as 1 times 10 to the minus 7 times 1 times 10 to the minus 7 equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14. This is why neutral water at 298 Kelvin has a pH value of 7 as pH equals minus log to the base 10 concentration of H plus ions. If concentration of H plus ions equals 1 times 10 to the minus 7, then pH equals minus log to the base 10, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 equals 7. Really important to remember, this is all only for a temperature of 298 Kelvin. If the temperature of pure water changes, the position of equilibrium for water dissociation also changes. This results in a change in H plus ion concentration, and as pH is based on H plus ion concentration, the pH changes as a result. The dissociation of water molecules is endothermic, meaning if temperature is increased, more dissociation occurs, increasing the concentration of H plus ions and decreasing the pH value. If you are unsure about that, Check chemistrystudent.com for Le Chatelier's principle. The water is still neutral, however, as both H plus and OH minus ions are produced in equal amounts when dissociation occurs, meaning their concentrations are equal to each other, making the solution neutral. For example, at 298 Kelvin, the value for Kw is 1 times 10 to the power minus 14 which, as we've seen, gives a H plus ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the minus 7 mole per decimeter cubed, and therefore a pH value of 7. At 328 Kelvin, however, the value for Kw is 7.23 times 10 to the power minus 14. To find the pH of water at this temperature, we need to know the H plus ion concentration. Kw equals concentration of H plus times concentration of OH minus, and Kw is 7.23 times 10 to the minus 14, meaning concentration of H plus times concentration of OH minus equals 7.23 times 10 to the minus 14. 
we know the concentration of both ions has to be the same as we're dealing with pure water. Meaning H plus concentration times OH minus concentration is actually the same value as H plus concentration squared. This means H plus concentration squared equals 7.23 times 10 to the minus 14. Solving this gives us H plus concentration equals the square root of 7.23 times 10 to the minus 14. H plus concentration therefore equals 2.69 times 10 to the minus 7. pH equals minus log to the base 10 concentration of H plus, and this means pH equals minus log to the base 10, 2.69 times 10 to the minus 7, 6.57. As the temperature has increased, position of equilibrium for water dissociation has shifted. More dissociation occurs, increasing the concentration of H plus ions and decreasing the pH. The water is still neutral though, as the concentration of H plus ions is still the same as the concentration of OH minus ions. Whenever we say a solution is neutral if it has a pH of 7, what we should actually be saying is a solution with a pH of 7 at 298 Kelvin is neutral. For a solution to be acidic, H plus concentration must be greater than the concentration of hydroxide, OH minus, ions. Equally, if concentration of H plus ions is less than the concentration of hydroxide ions, the solution is described as alkaline. KW can be really useful for calculating the pH of an alkaline solution when we are only given information about OH minus ion concentration. For example, calculate the pH of a solution of sodium hydroxide that has a concentration of 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed at 298 Kelvin. Sodium hydroxide is a strong alkali and fully dissociates into Na plus and OH minus ions when dissolved in water, meaning we know the solution has an OH minus ion concentration of 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed, as the molar ratio of sodium hydroxide to hydroxide ions is 1 to 1, and we are told the concentration of sodium hydroxide solution is 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed. The problem is to find the pH of the solution, we need to know the H plus ion concentration, and all we know here is the OH minus ion concentration. Well, remember that Kw, the ionic product of water, equals the concentration of H plus ions times concentration of OH minus ions. And at 298 Kelvin, Kw equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14. This means, for this example, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 equals concentration of H plus ions times 0.5. As we've just established, the concentration of OH minus ions is 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed. Rearranging this gives us a H plus ion concentration of 2 times 10 to the minus 14. Put this into the expression for pH, minus log to the base 10 concentration of H plus ions, and pH equals minus log to the base 10, 2 times 10 to the minus 14, a pH value of 13.7. So, to summarise, in a sample of pure water, a small percentage of molecules undergo dissociation into H plus and OH minus ions. As a result, water can be modelled as a weak acid. By treating water as a weak acid, it can be given its own acid dissociation constant, Ka. Ka of water equals concentration of H plus ions times concentration of OH minus ions divided by the concentration of H2O. In the expression, concentration of water will effectively always be constant, meaning Ka times concentration of H2O molecules is a constant value that will never change at a given temperature. This value is referred to as the ionic product of water, Kw, and at 298 Kelvin is 1 times 10 to the minus 14, with the units of mole to the power 2, decimeter to the power minus 6. Changes in temperature affect the position of equilibrium for the dissociation of water, meaning the concentration of H plus ions in solution also changes with temperature, changing the pH of the solution. 
the dissociation is endothermic, meaning at higher temperatures more dissociation occurs, based on Le Chatelier's principle. This decreases the pH as H plus ion concentration increases. In pure water, the concentrations of H plus and OH minus ions are always the same as each molecule of water that dissociates will release one H plus and one OH minus ion each, meaning the water will always be neutral, even if it doesn't have a pH value of 7. The value of Kw and OH minus concentration can be used to find the pH of alkaline solutions. If Kw equals concentration of H plus ions times concentration of OH minus ions, then concentration of H plus ions equals Kw divided by concentration of OH minus ions. The value of H plus can be substituted into the pH expression, pH equals minus log to the base 10 concentration of H plus ions, to find the pH of the solution. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.